A Clockwork Orange is Stanley Kubrick's extremely controversial adaptation of Anthony Burgess's Christian soap novel. Released in 1971, A Clockwork Orange has generally received backlash from its release and on into modern audiences for its graphic, or what not that graphic, depiction of rape, and as Alex puts it, ultra-violence. For some, it's a conflicted piece of art house cinema that doesn't offer anything other than to justify violence, and for others it's the pinnacle of exploration on humanity's free will, man's original sin. Kubrick is no stranger to dark humour and satire, and it finds itself on full display here. The world of A Clockwork Orange is bleak, vague and nihilistic. It's a world without identity because identity has been taken away from the individual. For all one might despise about Alex, and there's a lot to despise, Alex is the most human person in A Clockwork Orange. Alex's full name, Alexander, was chosen by Burgess for its original meaning, the defender of men, because Alex is the last person left with free will and identity. He's a lover of arts and beauty. He isn't the follower of a psychopath, he is the psychopath. Alex is free will and free will is Alex. It's understandable to see why so many people at the time of release and still to this day think that A Clockwork Orange is graphically obtuse and uncalled for. Whilst its violent scenes generally have a certain ballet grace to them, its sexual violence is certainly a difficult topic to discuss. However, A Clockwork Orange, as the name suggests, is about nature being unnatural and mechanical, cold and unfeeling. Ultimately, this film would have been made in any timeline that contains humans as they are. We are creatures of free will and that is our greatest sin. Humanity can never not possess evil because evil resides in all of us at a subconscious level. It is our personal choice to choose good over evil and that makes us human. Without this choice, we are simply beings that exist in the material plane with no ability to rationalize our internal impulses. So when somebody asks why this film had to be made, the answer is quite simple. Violence in all forms is inherently natural. It's in part of our subconscious and it's in our DNA. We are creatures of violence because we were once creatures of survival. Films like A Clockwork Orange allow us to understand this. Kubrick's almost surrealist vision of the future isn't just for laughs. It's a deliberately overt take on a society without identity, a society of conformity and oppression of identity. It's riddled with images of power structures and their ability to control the individual. The most apt image Kubrick uses to achieve this is the pyramid. Pyramids of power are everywhere, echoing throughout the film's entire shot composition, commissioned posters and set design. Characters repeatedly emerge from the tip of the pyramid to descend down upon those below them, eventually leading Alex to break free as he leaps from his pyramid-esque composed window to suicide, metaphorically and physically regaining free will and his identity in the process. Not only does this ending serve the purpose of freeing Alex from inaction and providing him with individuality again by breaking him free of the pyramids of societal power, but it represents the perpetual cycle of violence humanity is plagued by, further exemplified by the circular prison yard that the prisoners are marched around in perpetuating their cycle of violence by the systemic institution of prison. It's intense and obtuse because it allows us to not be as distressed by its subject matter and let the topic of free will nestle into our subconscious. We are the experiment to Kubrick. This film is almost a mirror of what Alex is subjected to through the Ludovico technique, and for that it's one of the most humanitarian pieces of art ever made. A Clockwork Orange is a reflection of human existence and why you must fight for good. And that is why art matters.